Welcome everyone to Too Good to Be True. Thank you for taking the time to listen. The subject of today's show is climate change and free energy. Before we start getting into details, let's just briefly talk about psychic insight and how we apply it. We choose a subject and research and based on that research, we determine what we think needs to be explained by creating a series of questions. Then Justina provides psychic insight to answer those questions. The psychic insight is narrated towards the end of the show. Accepting the psychic insight is a question of individual belief. Now let's go through the disclaimers. Here are the disclaimers. Neither of us claim to have any expertise on any subjects that we discuss. We relate information we find through research and the psychic insight. We are always delighted to hear from the listeners. The show only lasts an hour. We don't have the time to present exhaustive research on any topic. This means that there will be information that we miss. We want to provide a basis for the psychic insight. We don't care if a theory turns out too good to be true, as the show name suggests. We are only interested in finding out more of the truth about topics. Spirit can only relate insight that is appropriate for our time in history. Free will cannot be affected. Only comments that are appropriate for our time can be given through the psychic insight. Much of the subject matter in shows may have already been covered many times in other media. We want to look into subjects in a new, different way and be thought-provoking. We are not so good with pronouncing names, we apologize, and neither of us have any particular knowledge of physics, climatology, or economics. If we have misstated anything, we apologize. There are conspiracy theories that free energy could be made available to mankind with this information being kept hidden away because the result could be economic collapse. Also, if free energy were available, it might influence the climate change debate. What are the numbers for the world's energy use for different types? There must be significant use of renewable energy by now, like wind or solar. According to Wikipedia, and quote, in 2016, total world energy came from 80% fossil fuels, 10% biofuels, 5% nuclear, and 5% renewable. That's hydro, wind, solar, geothermal. Only 18% of that total world energy was in the form of electricity. Most of the other 82% was used for heat and transportation, unquote. Fossil fuels include coal, oil, and natural gas. The percentage for renewable energy seems low. It has been growing at an annual rate of just over 8% for the last seven years. Without doing a math, it might take a long time for renewable energy to replace fossil fuels. But there must be a limit to how many wind farms can be created. What about solar panels? You just need to put them on your roof. Currently in the United States, you would have to invest $10,000 to $15,000 to get a return of around $2,000 per year. The average single family home owner stays put for 13 years. So it looks like you would typically get your money back off before moving on. But if you got a loan and pay interest or move after only a few years, you might not do that well. You would expect solar panels to last at about 20 years, though. So why don't more homes have solar panels? The the local climate might be all wrong. The house might be in the shade, but possibly people may be anticipating a technology breakthrough, breakthrough and they are awaiting a cheaper solution. But there are a lot of details to consider. Some countries have invested in solar panels at a greater pace than the United States. Yes, Germany currently produces half its electricity from solar power. Germany's goal is to produce 100% of its electricity from renewable resources by 2050. Germany has stopped producing nuclear power, but is still mining lignite or brown coal, which is more polluting than black coal. How do they achieve so much success with solar power in a country not known for year-round sunshine? By the government providing homeowners with financial incentives. So it's all about the money. But remember that only 18% of the world's energy use is in the form of electricity. So what are the more efficient types of energy? Solar and wind power obviously don't use fuel. I think it's easier to talk about the least efficient. Gasoline burnt in a car engine is very inefficient. Typically only about 20% of the energy is used in making the car move. Hybrid cars are better, but not that much better. When electricity gets to your home, they will have there will have been losses of 8 to 15% of the power transmitted. 
Some sources say that actually up to half the power is lost on the way to your home. If coal is burned to generate electricity, it's only about 33% efficient, which is obviously not a high number. That's sad. A high percentage of energy bills go to paying for energy that is lost or can't be used. We haven't mentioned the pollution from 80% of the energy being derived from fossil fuels. So there must be a huge incentive to develop new forms of energy that are highly efficient and don't pollute and of course are less expensive. There is some belief that little or no cost energy could be available but is being hidden from us. The website Crystal Links names the alleged conspiracy behind that belief. Quote, free energy suppression is a, is a conspiracy theory which claims that advanced technology which would reshape current energy paradigms is being suppressed by certain special interest groups. These groups are usually claimed to be associated with the coal, oil, nuclear or natural gas industry to whom current energy generation technology is profitable or government agencies who view such as potentially detrimental to the national or world economic system, unquote. During a previous episode, a technique for the transmission of electricity through the atmosphere was researched by Nikola Tesla in the 19th and 20th centuries. During another episode, we also learned that on his death, some of Tesla's patents and documents were seized by the government to be kept secret. That would suggest that free energy suppression is a reality. And think about all the pollution that may have been avoidable. Yes, you have to be careful eating fish from lakes or rivers because of the mercury in their bodies originating from burning coal. However, the claim is made that mercury is released into the air in greater quantities by volcanoes and wildfires than by power plants. Whether or not the science is correct and climate change, burning fossil fuels, increases pollution and the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Yes, large-scale funding for climate change science apparently started when British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher in 1989 uh, threatened disaster. That science seems to have been mixed up with politics ever since. Later, Margaret Thatcher became skeptical skeptical about the entire subject and even attacked Al Gore's schemes to reduce CO2 emissions. With CO2 being created by burning fossil fuels, there must have been a high amount of carbon removed from the atmosphere in the first place to store the carbon. Plants use photosynthesis to create food based on carbon-containing molecules through capturing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. But weren't fossil fuels created a very long time ago? The age of the biomass that created fossil fuels is thought to be 300 to 650 million years ago. There must have been very favorable conditions for so many plants and animals to grow and die to be converted into coal, oil and natural gas. I wonder what the the planet's atmosphere was like that long ago. You know that my views are very strong on environmental protection. One fact is clear, sea levels are rising. Also, temperatures appear to be increasing, just going by the last few summers. As the oceans get warmer, they will expand and rise even without more water from ice melting. The website Science Alert provides an overview of sea level rise. Quote, Satellite data measured across a 25-year period shows that not only are there, are there seas rising, they're rising faster and faster, an acceleration that is on track to double the jump in sea levels by 2100 compared with a fixed increase year on year. The acceleration is driven mainly by more and more of the ice in Greenland and Antarctica melting away, according to the scientists, who are warning that more data is need, needs to be gathered to prepare for the effects of sea level rise. Right now, the oceans rise by around three millimeters each year, but that number is going up by 0.08 millimeter every 12 meters, sorry, every 12 months, the data shows. By the time the next century rolls around, we could be up to a rise of 10 millimetres every year. In total, we will be looking at a rise of 65 centimetres or 25 inches by 2100, compared with uh, around 30 centimetres if the annual rise is steadied at the current speed. Unquote. 30 centimetres is about 12, inch, 12 inches, while 10 millimetres is about four tenths of an inch. What is the situation with increasing temperatures around the world? NASA's Earth Observatory website provides a summary. Quote, according to an ongoing temperature analysis conducted by scientists at NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, 
the average global temperature on Earth has increased by about 0.8 degrees Celsius or 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit since 1880. Two thirds of the warming has occurred since 1975 at a rate of roughly 0.5, 0.15 to 0.20 degrees Celsius per decade, unquote. There's apparently no standard way that average global temperature is calculated, but NASA's Goddard Institute has its own methodology. It uses a measurement of temperature change, not actual temperature, but is based on actual temperature data, including from boreholes in the ground. In other episodes, we have learned that the Earth has consciousness. I wonder how that plays into climate change. A wide acceptance that the Earth has consciousness, consciousness would take an incredibly large shift to place spirituality in the mainstream. There's a massive drought going on in Australia right now. A massive area in the east of the country is being devastated with no end in sight. I think we'll have to talk more about uh, what we think is happening with the climate after the next break. Yes, we'll continue after this short break. And you're listening to Too Good To Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xcbn.net. skeptic or a believer join me rob mcconnell as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the exxon radio tv show on xzbn and the exxon tv channel on simul tv since 1990 the exxon radio tv show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard together we'll investigate ufos aliens ghosts bigfoot psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like exxon sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. 
Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we were discussing the massive drought in Australia. Yes, uh, there's also some other scary things going on, like the uh, seaweed in the Sargasso Sea. It's growing more than usual, destroying tourism, local communities and wildlife in the Caribbean. Rotting seaweed is washing, washing up on beaches and smelling like rotten eggs. Scientists, scientists don't know whether pollution or climate change is the root cause. That's an example of not reversing the destruction of our planet, having devastated economic consequences, even if local to the Caribbean. Every place could be described as being local. The objective should be to restore the riches of the planet, not to consume them entirely. I am sure that free energy would help with cleaning up the planet while not further polluting it. If chemical or physical processes were needed for cleanup, then free energy would take away the objection of who's going to pay the power bill. But let's get back to the work of Nikola Tesla. Here's part of an article from the website, The Times Now, from 2015. Quote, he first discussed the concept of free energy in his article, The Problem of Increasing Human Energy, which was published in Century Illustrated magazine in June of 1900. In this piece, Tesla went on to describe the various means by which he, we gather energy in the world before suggesting a new method of his own. Tesla described a machine that he called a self-acting machine, uh, sorry, a self-acting engine, which would be able to pull the heat from the air around it. He described it as the ideal way of obtaining motive power. He spent years trying to bring this concept to life. Many of his other inventions began as a means of creating this engine and eventually spun off into something else, unquote. Did Tesla develop his invention of the self-acting engine? Years later, he said that he did, but he also worked on using cosmic rays. Here's part of an article from the Earthlink website, quote, In the Brooklyn Eagle, Tesla announced on July the 10th, 1931, that I have harnessed the cosmic rays and caused them to operate a motive device. Later on in the same article, he said that more than 25 years ago, I began my efforts to harness the cosmic rays, and I can now state that I have succeeded. In 1933, he made the same assertion in an article for the New York American under the lead device to harness cosmic energy claimed by Tesla. Here he said, this new power for the driving of the world's machinery will be derived from the energy which operates the universe, the cosmic energy, whose central source for the Earth is the sun and which is everything present in unlimited quantities. Dating back more than 24, 25 years ago from 1933 would mean the device Tesla was speaking about must have been built around before 1908. More precise information is available through his correspondence in the Columbia University Library's collection. Writing on June the 10th, 1902, to his friend Robert U. Johnson, editor of the Century magazine, Tesla included a clipping from the previous day's New York Herald about a Clemente Figueres, a woods and forest engineer in Las Palmas, capital of the, Can the Canary Islands, who had invented a device for gen generating electri electricity without burning fuel. What became of the figurist and his fuelless generator is not known, but his, his announcement in the paper prompted Tesla in his letter to Johnson to claim he had already developed such a device and had revealed the underlying, underlying physical laws, unquote. That is all very interesting, but is there an actual description of any of Tesla's inventions? The website Immediate, Immediate Press provides a description I could understand for the self-acting engine. Quote, Tesla's self-acting engine works by simply creating a perpetual cold sink where heat can be constantly moved, where heat can constantly move towards it while producing mechanical work. Tesla has been quoted as saying it is his most important engineering accomplishment. This is oversimplified, but is the basic idea in a nutshell, unquote. I thought that perpetual motion machines cannot receive patents because they are impossible. 
This description is for a perpetual cold sink, meaning that as heat moves towards something, that something doesn't heat up and remains cold. But that sounds impossible. I was struggling with that and came across Dr. Peter Lindemann. He states the following on his website, Open System Thermodynamics, which markets the content of his lectures on the subject. Quote, the second law of thermodynamics says that machines that produce more energy than you put the, into them are impossible, but that's, not, that, but that's not true. That only applies to machines whose energy input is close to the environment. But for machines that are open to the environment, they can produce more energy than you put into them, unquote. Tesla apparently wasn't working on a closed system like a refrigerator, but was working on an open system, namely the planet. What do we know about Dr. Peter Lindman? Here's his own website called Free Energy. The following is the first the following is the first paragraph from the introduction on the homepage. Quote For many people, free energy is a buzzword, but there's no clear meaning. As such, it relates to a host of inventions that do something that is not understood and is therefore a mystery. For for others it means perpetual motion and is therefore dismissed without due consideration. This website is dedicated to clarifying exactly what free energy is, how it works, and how it can be applied in your everyday life for light, heat, and power, unquote. That all sounds super optimistic. What is Dr. Lindman's clarification of free energy? The website is a massive source of literature with many examples of technologies of how free energy could be produced. It would take months to read all the content, including references. So I looked further and found an article in the London Daily Express from January of 2017 entitled Shock Claim Free Energy That Could Stop Climate Change Was Invented Then Covered Up. I will quote from the article because it mentions possible technologies. Quote, the theory centers around claims that scientists have invented viable technologies to create free energy, including perpetual motion machines, cold fusion generators and torus based generators. It further alleges equipment does exist which can extract usable power from unconventional energy reservoirs, such as a quantum vacuum zero-point energy, for little or no cost. But that anyone trying to progress their systems has been silenced or even killed before the power sources were launched. At the most extreme end of the conspiracy theory, it ties in with alien believers. It is claimed by some that free energy source technology has been provided by alien visitors to, the, to Earth or that scientists on Earth have worked out how to develop it after reverse engineering UFOs that allegedly crashed here. Other claims are that some free energy systems could also be used as an electromagnetic weapon and the United States is terrified of this information getting into the wrong hands, unquote. Starting with cold fusion, didn't that come to a grinding halt some years ago? Yes, more recently, Italian inventor Andrea Rossi claimed that he, ha he has invented the energy catalyzer, also called ECAT, cold fusion reactor. The energy catalyzer is a cylinder about the size of a wine bottle filled with powdered nickel and hydrogen. It is claimed by Rossi to produce energy by an unspecified reaction. But in 2017, a lawsuit was settled after Rossi was sued for making alleged fraudulent claims about his invention. It turns out that Rossi has been convicted of fraud in the past and has served jail time. That doesn't sound very promising, but what about torus based generators? They were apparently invented by Nikola Tesla, but after his workshop mysteriously burnt to the ground, he didn't pursue further research. Here's part of an article from the website Global Democracy. Quote, a torus generator or dynamo creates an electromagnetic field that pulls energy literally from the air around it. This may sound strange, but let's take a moment to think about it. There's enough energy within your own body to blow your entire district to smithereens and then some. If there is that much just within your atoms, think how much there must be in the gazillions of atoms that invisibly surround us. The generator can be operated manually by turning a handle, handle, which creates large amounts of energy, can run automatically or can be plugged into a power source, at which point it creates more energy than it takes to run, effectively running your meter backwards, unquote. Aren't a lot of websites saying that Taurus-based generators are nonsense? 
Yes, there are. But if you search any type of free energy, you get proponents and opponents. The final technology you mentioned in the Daily Express article is quantum vacuum zero point energy. Here's part of an article from the Inverse website posted in June of last year. Quote, zero point energy, also known as ground state energy, could be the greatest gift the quantum world can ever give us. It's a byproduct of the fact that subatomic particles don't really behave like single particles, but like waves constantly flitting between different energy states. This means that even the seemingly empty vacuum of space is actually a boiling sea of virtual particles fluctuating in and out of existence, and all those fluctuations require energy. If there is as much energy in those fluctuations as some, though definitely not all, physicists believed, and if we could e ever learn how to tap into this phenomenon, we could gain access to an unparalleled source of energy. Zero-point energy could power the planet with the strength of multiple suns, making it easy to solve Earth's energy problems forever, or to travel beyond the solar system and take our place among the stars. I think I'm going to have to continue this quote after the break, Justina. Yes, we'll continue this quote after the break and continue talking about zero-point energy. And you're listening to Too Good to Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. 
It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Dot com. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we're discussing an article from the Daily Express titled Quantum Vacuum Zero Point Energy. So, Dad, can you please continue with the quote? Yes, sure. However, we can only guess how much energy is actually contained in the vacuum with legendary physicists in fierce disagreement on this point. Richard Feynman and John Wheeler calculated the zero-point radiation of the vacuum was so powerful that even a small cup of it would be enough to set all of Earth's oceans to boil. But Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity suggests zero-point energy would gravitate, spreading out throughout the universe and be mitigated to a weak power, unquote. That all sounds great, but how do you harness zero-point energy? I'm not sure, but I found an article on so-called Casimir Energy published by Princeton University on the phys.org website from April of last year. Quote, getting something from nothing sounds like a good deal. So for years, scientists have been trying to exploit the tiny amount of energy that rises when objects are brought very close together. It's a source of energy so obscure it was once derided as a fanciful source of perpetual motion. Now, a research team, including Princeton scientists, have, has found a way to harness a mysterious force of repulsion, which is one aspect of that force. This energy, predicted seven decades ago by Dutch scientist Hendrik Casimir, arises from quantum effects and can be seen experimentally by placing two opposing plates very close to each other in a vacuum. At close range, the plates repel each other, which would be, could be useful to certain technologies. Until recently, however, harnessing this Casimir force to do anything useful seemed impossible, unquote. That's encouraging with promising research in the mainstream. But didn't we discuss free energy and electricity during an episode on ancient Egypt? We did, and since then there's been an interesting article published in the London Daily Mail on July the 31st of this year. The article is entitled, Scientists Discover Great Pyramid of Giza Can Focus Electromagnetic Energy Through Its Hidden Chambers. Here's part of the article. Quote, Egyptian pyramids have always attracted some attention, says Dr. Andre Evlukin, scientific supervisor and coordinator of the research. We as scientists were interested in them as well, so we decided to look at the Great Pyramid as a, as a particle dissipating radio waves resonantly. The international research team looked into the relationship between the shape of the Great Pyramid of Giza and its ability to focus electromagnetic energy. To do this, a team led by ITMO University in St. Petersburg, Russia, created a model of the pyramid, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, to accurately, accurately measure its, electro, its, its electromagnetic response. The article continues. Scientists use multipole analysis, a method widely used in physics to study the interaction between a complex object and an electromagnetic field to reveal how the pyramid concentrates electromagnetic energy into its underground chambers, unquote. Maybe one day the technology of ancient Egypt will be rediscovered. But with that, can you ask the first question? Yes. Is there any truth to the conspiracy theory of free energy suppression that advanced energy technology could be made available but isn't because the non-use of fossil fuels will be very damaging to the global economy? So that's a very complex question since that's a bunch of questions combined. But for number one, fossil fuels were the original source. So it's basically more, you could say, technology that is going out of time. So originally, it was the only way that people thought was using f fossil fuels for energy. 
there's a rule that energy cannot be created or destroyed. However, yes, there's different means to use different resources that are renewable for energy, and there's technology in the works. However, yes, there are some people who would not want this technology in the public eye being used mainstream since it would interfere with the money supply. So the overall answer is yes. However, it wouldn't be a large shift where all of a sudden different types of energy would be used, but instead a smaller shift that would come in stages where fossil fuels could be used less and less. If free energy availability and managing the global economy were planned for, why should there be glo global financial collapse with an enormous financial burden being lifted from the entire world's population? The financial burden and financial situation in general depends on what income level you're at. So, for example, the middle class and lower class view money very differently from the upper class or the rich, as you may call them. So the fear is that if there was a financial burden, it may not affect the middle and lower classes as much, but it may affect the rich upper class and the companies with a lot of money. So the fear is that the ones that have a lot of money will lose large chunks of money. So it may not be full financial collapse, but it may be a financial crash for some in their minds. With the focus on solar and wind energy for electricity generation, with only about 18% of the total energy being used being, used, being supplied by electricity, is the other 80%, 82% of the total energy used being forgotten about? Yes. So the problem is that with renewable resources, renewable energy, it's more of a focused view. For example, with the example of cars compared to an overall view, and that goes back to using fossil fuels is quite outdated, but fossil fuels are used for much more than just electricity. So the problem with humans is that they really don't find a solution to a problem unless the problem is right in their faces. For example, the solution is usually not found until it has to be a solution because the problem is right there. So to basically answer the question is that renewable resources should, and it would help if they were used for all 100% or even, let's say, 50 compared to a small 18%. Are typical energy losses of 8 to 15 percent of the power transmitted from power plants, are, are, there, are those losses being correctly reported? No. So in some circumstances, the cables, the way the electricity gets through to the homes is very outdated. And to save money and save time, to save the effort to put in new lines, the numbers can be, you could say, changed so that this expense does not need to be paid for. So, example, the loss may be 30% for some people, but for the numbers, the numbers are more of an average. So, it really depends on how electricity is getting there, where the area is, how old the different technology is, etc. So, the problem with a lot of reported numbers is that if the person is doing the testing themselves, there may be ways to make these numbers look better so that the loss is less than the actual number loss. So, that's the problem with numbers is that it's all based on who is actually testing and reporting these numbers. Were discoveries in advanced energy technology a reason why some of Nikola Tesla's patents and documents were seized by the government on his death and then kept secret? For other reasons, too. So the government wanted his technology since they didn't believe the general public would use it in the correct way, and they thought it was best to be government hands. So part of it, of it was energy, but part of it was other technological advancements. Is mercury typically released into the air in greater quantities by volcanoes and wildfires than by coal-burning power plants? It really depends on the actual situation. So in some cases, yes, and in other cases, no. Why did Margaret Thatcher become the first well-known politician to speak out on the world stage about global warming, now termed climate, climate change, and then later turn around to become a skeptic. Basically, because global warming is such a controversial topic with the public, so many different politicians want to go with a greater view of the public, which sways their own individual opinions. So you could say that some politicians just want to go with the popular view, not the unpopular one. When carbon is released into the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels, does that result in vegetation being able to grow better with more CO2 available? 
Not always, no. If fossil fuels are so harmful to the environment, why were they made available to the human race by the planet's natural processes to burn for energy? That question could be asked for many different things. So let's take the example of diamonds. Were diamonds made to make very expensive objects of? Was that the Earth's intention? So that basically could be asked for any resource, that the resource was put there, but the Earth didn't get in a say in how humans actually use it. So for example of diamonds, there's not an idea that the Earth would make the concept and that people should give them to each other, sell them for very expensive prices, and mine them. How was the Earth atmosphere different 300 to 650 million years ago from that of today, such that plant growth was so productive that enormous quantities of fossil fuels were created from it? Basically, you can think of it as a thicker, harder layer. So there was more this dome effect around the Earth where the natural processes were not interrupted like they are today. So the natural cycle of the plants, animals, etc. were not affected as much greatly by humans. So that's not only fossil fuels, but also the destruction of the environment, creating less natural products, etc. So fossil fuels obviously play a big part in it, but there needs to be natural evolution and the natural cycle of the plants and wildlife. And the atmosphere was just kind of a dome that helped it all cycle through. Are current sea level rise projections reasonably accurate? No, there's not really a prediction that can ever be 100% accurate. And yes, there are levels that will rise, but the Earth is still unpredictable. So there may be some surprises with predicted numbers. I think we're going to have to do the next question after the break, Justina. Yes, we'll continue after the break with the psychic insight and the questions. And you're listening to Too Good to Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the Axon Broadcast Network. Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at SimulTV.com. Do it today. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 
1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember Exxon Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. back to too good to be true and before the break we're going through the questions and the psychic insight about climate change and free energy so dad can you please continue with the questions sure are current global temperature projections reasonably accurate no again the earth is very unpredictable so something could change very quickly if sea and air temperatures are rising why can't some form of heat pump be used to produce work from excess thermal energy It could be if a scientist or scientists wanted to put an effort into researching this and designing it. So yes, using thermal heat is a possibility. We have heard in more than one episode that the Earth has consciousness. What can all we do, what can we all do rather, besides not treating the planet like a garbage dump to help reverse the increase in global temperatures and uh, stop the increase in sea level? Well, one... We basically have to put the message out there that the humans don't know everything. So humans think of anything and everything of Earth, and there's still so much research to be done. So there needs to be this mutual respect where humans as a race realize that the Earth is this living natural body where it can't always be predicted. They can't always know the answers. And also renewable energy, renewable resources, going towards more of that. Because once a resource is taken out of the earth, especially one that has been there for many years, it cannot be put back. So thinking about that in terms of something being valuable, for example, someone wouldn't take a diamond and then destroy it. So why take a fossil fuel that has also taken hundreds of thousands of years to be made and just destroy it? What is the best way of promoting the spiritual belief that the earth is consciousness such that the belief becomes mainstream? Basically, just speaking up and not being afraid to speak one's beliefs. So there are many different people who believe that the earth has its own consciousness. But the problem is that the earth is not a judgment-free zone. So while a lot of people are very judgmental, and so making this belief more mainstream, and obviously getting it out on social media, getting it out in different places, so more people can really think about the earth and think about why we are living here. So the hard part is making people believe that the Earth needs to be taken care of instead of just exiting the planet, for example, or the research on Mars. It's really the thought that we are going to destroy the one planet just to go to another planet and destroy another one. Yes, diamond-like coal is a form of carbon. Has a planet in the past experienced complete renewal from global environmental disaster? Yes and no. If you want to think about it as kind of a start over, then yes. If we completely destroy the planet's ability to support the human race, is there a chance in the future that the planet will renew itself? Yes, but it would take so many thousands or maybe millions of years that the consequences would be extreme and in the process the human race may not have a place to go. Are earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, which seem more common these days, a reaction from the Earth's consciousness? You can think of it that way, where the Earth is going to go through its cycle. It's going to do what it pleases, and the Earth is there first. So any structure, anything humans do, is on the top of the Earth. So overall, the Earth kind of has this force that it can use. So for example, if a bunch of people build a volcano, that volcano is there first, not the structures. Is the drought in eastern Australia influenced by climate change or was it inevitable due to natural cycles? That one was unavoidable, so it was going to happen anyway. Is it worse because of climate change? Yes and no. The issue is that in previous times, 
places that didn't have humans, so the effect wasn't as extreme. So there's always the fear in building in places in very extreme climates is that it's not always a place that life can be supported. Are increased sea temperatures creating a massive overgrowth of seaweed in the Sargasso Sea, or is it pollution or a combination of increased sea temperature and pollution? A combination of both. Was Tesla mach Tesla's machine that he called a self-acting engine capable of providing free energy? In a way, yes, but it needed a lot more development. What became of Tesla's self-acting engine? It was destroyed. Did Tesla succeed in creating a device to harness cosmic energy by 1933, as he had claimed in an article in the New York American newspaper? That could be said. What became of Clemente Figueres and his fuelless generator described in the 1902 New York Herald newspaper clipping that Tesla put into a letter to his friend Robert Hugh Johnson? It was also destroyed. Did Tesla's self-acting engine work by simply creating a perpetual cold sink where heat can be constantly moving towards it while producing mechanical work? In summary, yes. Is Dr. Peter Lindemann correct in stating that the second law of thermodynamics only applies to closed systems, whereas machines that produce more energy than put into them are possible for open systems such as the planet? That could be said. Is the energy catalyzer also called the ECAT cold fusion reactor a hoax? Partially, yes. The details about it aren't 100% true, but if there's something similar that exists, it just doesn't completely work. Did Tesla invent a torus generator that creates an electromagnetic field that pulls energy from the air around it? Yes, but that energy, of course, needs to come from somewhere. So where would that energy come from? A parallel universe or where else would it come from? That's the problem with free energy, that it is unpredictable where it would come from. So yes, it could come from basically space, a parallel universe, another dimension, etc. So the unpredictability is the fear. Was Tesla's workshop burned to the ground to prevent him from further developing a Taurus generator or other free energy device? Partially, yes. Is there enough energy within a human body to destroy a large area? That could be said. Why are there so many websites stating that Taurus generators are nonsense? Because they didn't fully work. So the problem is if it isn't in the public eye, if it isn't proven, then nobody believes it. Is zero-point energy, also known as ground state energy, a possible form of free energy? Yes, but harnessing it would be very, very difficult. Do subatomic sub particles behave like waves, constantly flitting between different energy states? Yes and no. There is a scale of how much they do, but generally, yes. How can the vacuum of space be a sea of virtual, virtual particles fluctuating in and out of existence? Isn't a vacuum populated with particles a contradiction? Yes, it is a contradiction, but the problem is physics on Earth doesn't mean the physics is the same everywhere. Could zero-point energy power the planet with the strength of multiple suns? Yes, but that would be technology that is way in the future. Is the calculation correct that zero-point energy of a vacuum is so large that even a small cup of it would be enough to boil the Earth's oceans? If harnessed properly, yes. Is Einstein's theory of general relativity correct that zero-point energy would spread out throughout the universe to be mitigated to a weak power? Not exactly. Is harnessing the Casimir force created by placing two, op uh, two opposing plates very close to each other in a vacuum a step forward in, harnessing, in the harnessing of zero-point energy? Yes. Are there any free energy technologies that we haven't discussed but we should be aware of? Going back to magnetic fields and also the magnetic fields of the Earth, the Earth has magnetic fields for a reason, and basically tapping into these magnetic fields with a different technological magnet would be very easy to have energy and eliminate the need for fossil fuels. Can the Great Pyramid of Giza focus electromagnetic energy through its hidden chambers as recently reported? Yes. With this new evidence, why isn't the Great Pyramid of Giza being reverse engineered? They can't get into all the chambers. Is that because the chambers are closed in or is it because the authorities won't let them? 
both. What will it take for the people of planet Earth to demand global cleanup of pollution along with the free energy necessary to enable that? That's a very com complex question, but for some, it's going to take basically a smack in the face. So when they lose their own belongings, their own money, they lose things that mean something to them, it will take that. For others, it's just going to take more news reports, more information, and realizing that everyone can do their own part by pushing for more scientific research, for even cleaning up pollution, volunteering time, etc., and spreading more positive news about people who just even volunteer an hour of their time to help clean up a beach or to push forward for a new global energy and exposing information that's false since, for example, there have been the negativity that wind turbines kill birds, but others don't realize that almost anything can kill a bird, even a window. So it's getting the information that's more mainstream out there and making sure that information is correct. What can we learn from the climate change debate, especially in terms of avoiding the politicizing of science? Basically, researching and researching all different perspectives and realizing that scientists are getting more political because they want their voices heard, but also realizing that when politicians and politics are involved, sometimes the information isn't 100% accurate. So for people who really want to learn the truth, making sure they read peer-reviewed articles, journals, and not just go to Twitter or Facebook or other social media for news. That was the last answer. Is the availability of free energy too good to be true? That depends on what you are prepared to believe. I think we've run out of time to discuss any more, Justina. I think we'll just talk about uh, the next episode. Yes, uh, we'll look forward to the next episode. And as always, we thank our listeners for listening today. And of course, we're always open to future suggestions. You can either contact us at our Facebook page or our website at Too Good To Be True with the first spell, first T, first T is spelled T O W O. And thank you to all the listeners. skeptic or a believer join me rob mcconnell as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the exxon radio tv show on xzbn and the exxon tv channel on simul tv since 1990 the exxon radio tv show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard together we'll investigate ufos aliens ghosts bigfoot Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? 
Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.